Well, welcome back once again to the Krabby's Changing Room chat ahead of uh, Friday night's game, a rerun, Chris, of the 2010 game over at Croke Park. Certain Jim Hamilton involved. Welcome, Jim. Great to have you on. Thank you. I love how you called me a certain Jim Hamilton. You, <laughs> I, and you, when you introduced Jason, you said a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you want me to rerun it? We uh, are joined today. By the second best second row ever to play for Scotland. In the world. <laughs> oh, in the world. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> you pair you have started already. Uh, oh, no. Bam, hey. So, uh, we were the dream team, though, Al. This is what, this is what a lot of people don't realise. It's all about the Grey Brothers. It was all about Wagger, British and Irish Lions. But actually, <laughs> mate, me and you, Argentina, same year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ireland at Croke Park in 2010. Mate, we had some big wins. I was looking back at the game uh, from 2010. Line-out stats. Oh, stop it. Hit Honestly, me. well, what do you mean? Stop it with your two second rows. We're not, we're not talking anything about <laughs> kicking the ball or any of your... Not, we're just talking line-outs today. That's all we're doing. Rugby. Right. Proper Go rugby. Then. Proper Go rugby. In, in, impress me then. Impress me. So their stats, they had 17 line-outs, uh, of which we won eight. Eight? Yeah. No. Yep. Guilty. Who's there? Yeah. Uh, is that you? who's in the second row for them? Uh, Paul Connell? Yeah. Paul and, uh, and uh, Donica. Donica, yeah. Donica Callahan. Uh, uh, Rory, uh, I remember chatting to him after the game. Rory didn't have his best game, Chuck. So we were, we were deliberately trying to make him throw over the top of us. And uh, uh, some of his were a bit short from what I remember. I mean, I don't remember the games that well, but I did check the stats. But we only had five or six lineups. Uh, but yeah, we won, we won eight of theirs. Uh, so how do you, how do you steal a lineup? Is it a strategy or is it? just covering all options and shouting and screaming and throwing people up in the air and putting off hookers. Is, is it a, is it a one size fits all for, for stealing the line out? Oh, yeah, I'll let, <laughs> let you, I'll let I'll let you hear this one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it says, mate, you just literally, mate, you shift to the front of the line out and you just scream, you close the gap, you scream with your hands in the air and mate, you can, well, maybe not now to throw a few swear words in there, but that's what we were doing at the front of the line. I just put them off, just do this with your hand. Mate, I tell you, it's amazing. Like me and Al, like we joke about it, but we both put in a lot of work and we were really passionate about the line out, maybe because we weren't the offloading, um, versatile uh, style player. That, that. I'll do. I'll do. Yeah, yeah, we'll cut that bit. <laughs> we'll cut that bit. So we put, did put a lot of work, but I just think you, you, can, al- you can almost overanalyze it. And, yeah. and, you know, we came up with a bit of a system that worked for a few years and joking about the dream team of me and Al, but we, we, with us both there because we were keen on the line out, uh, we were passionate about it. And look, frankly, in, in our time playing for Scotland we, we did have a good bat we had a good scrum mm-hmm. and we had a good line out and once you've got that and you build um, a bit of momentum around that with you and Murray at tight head we had chunk at loose head Forty throwing the ball in we had an array of bat rows that were willing to jump good bat kind of rows not in it the, the, yeah, the, exactly. the killer bees were all good options hmm yeah, they were. And that's when we put the work in. And so when we, you know, when we played against Ireland in 2010, when we played against England that year, um, we had a really good line out. And uh, I think that we'll probably chat a little bit about the game. But you look at that tournament as a whole, yeah. and we didn't get the results that we deserved. And you played in that Wales game where we were winning with 80, mm. 80 minutes on the clock and you had a nasty injury. Tom Evans had a nasty injury. But that year, we actually played really well. Like We actually mm. had a really good year. It was just, I think, the, the Wales game that year... Um, kind of halted us really both emotionally and a little bit physically because then we lost to Italy the week after but I think that game against Ireland in 2010 we, we built as a forward pack anyway we built a lot of momentum around scrum time around line time and I think we thoroughly deserved that win and uh, yeah we probably could have like a lot of things in our generation there was a lot of times that we could have should have would have but we actually did it that day and uh, I think we fully deserved it and I was well happy we better move on from line before we yeah. before we lose all of our listeners. Oh, Going back right. to 2010, Jim, what, what's your recollection, uh, recollections of the game? Killer bees, Johnny Beatty's try, um, Dan Park's penalty at the end, you remember it all? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and I, Look, I went back through the archives to have a look because I, I don't really look back too often, but and we've spoken about it before. A lot of people ask me to sum up my career and I say that there weren't many good days, but there were a few great days. And I think that that was a great day. And I mentioned it just earlier when, it, when we were chatting about it. That was a really tough championship, right? Because we were so close in that game against Wales. And that could have been completely different. We got the draw against England as well. If we would have beat Wales, I'm certain we would have beat in Italy as well. We lost all momentum. So it was almost like we were going into that last game at Croke Park. And every single person outside of our bubble 
would have been like, yeah, there ain't a chance this Scotland team are going to win. But, mate, we had a really good team. You know, we had the killer bees in the back row. You know, Parks took a lot, lot of stick playing for Scotland. But in that game, when it mattered most, that, that for me is what stands out. It's that kick from, from the mm-hmm. touchline. It, in the in the, it, like at the point of time that it was, I think we went something like 17, 17 3, 17 5 or something like that. We were winning comfortably in that game and we were all over them. Uh, but then they naturally, because when we played for Scotland, that's what happened. <laughs> Teams would come back in if we were winning like they did. And fair play to Parks. I think it was Nick DeLuke who got the turnover with Simon Danielli maybe on that touchline. Mm. And when that kick went over, I know there was still a restart to happen, but Mate, it was such an amazing feeling. Not because we'd beaten Ireland, but because of everything we put in uh, to that tournament that year. To actually a good Irish team. I don't. Were they on for the Grand Slam? Were they on for the Triple Crown? They were on for the Triple Crown, and yeah. uh, they knew that that was part of the night out afterwards because uh, we all ended up in the, in the same nightclub in mm. uh, in Dublin, and they had all their Triple Crown party arranged. Um, no. And, the, yeah, and we, we took full advantage of it, Marcy. <laughs> 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 so we, we mentioned it the night out, Jim. Um, for me, it was, it, it was good fun. And I remember I actually remember Johnny Beatty sitting with Rob Kearney and the respective wives and girlfriends in the, the, the beautiful corner. Where were you at that stage? Can you remember? Yeah, I was with the non-beautiful corner. So yourself and uh, Alan <laughs> Jacobson. We'd had a lot of disappointment. So to actually win that game in Dublin, which, as we know, is a great place to go out. They're very sociable there. But I remember we went to uh, celebrate the victory. And like you mentioned, the Irish team, their triple crown was all set up. They thought it was a foregone conclusion, which made the beer taste slightly nicer. But I remember and what happens is, is when you used to go out after a rugby match and, you know, if you had your suit on, obviously we had our tracksuits on, so everyone knew who we were. Um, You cause a bit of a stir, don't you? Because a lot of people, especially in Dublin, know all about the rugby. They've either gone to the game or they've watched it on TV. And I remember because we won the game, uh, I've ended up in the VIP lounge with with Chunk, with Alan Jacobson. And I'm sat at a table with these really cool hipster looking guys. And uh, they're singing around the table and they're quite chill. So we're just sat there and loads of people coming up asking for photos. And I've had to say to these guys, look, really sorry. Uh, Beating Ireland today. And uh, I stole about four or five line outs. So <laughs> I've got to apologise. We're getting mobbed here. And so I actually said to the guys, apologise. People are coming up left, right, and centre taking pictures. I'm, I said, oh, lads, get in the photo. So people are coming up. It was like Father Christmas. And so I'm sat there with Chunk. And then these lads get up to leave. And then everyone, you know, like the camera phone light, everyone's like following them with the lights <laughs> and stuff like that. And I said to the security guy, I said, hey, what's the crack with these lads? And he said, oh, it's the Mumford and Sons. <laughs> I remember you telling that story the next day. <laughs> oh my word! You mentioned great blokes to have in a team, and we really chatted them a, a wee bit there, Jim. But chunky Ali Jason, Ali Jacobson, at least said, "What what a man to have around, not only on the park but off the park as well." He, he's a big mate of yours, I know, um, but he was just a fantastic guy to have in around the squad, wasn't he? No, no better man, no no better rugby man in the modern era to have. Because he was such a good bloke off the pitch, but you know when he stepped over the pitch, regardless of what preparation has been, regardless of anything that went before results-wise, he wanted it so bad, you know? And that was, that, that was a good thing about you. He just put in every single millimetre of his being into, into the shirt, into the team. But then, you know, win, lose or draw, that, you know, he's going to enjoy it because that's, that's the way that he lived his life. And I had a really good relationship with with Chunk and yeah uh, like they're the times that I miss and they're the people that I miss and, it, and it, you know this is one of the things where when you retire is when you look back on your career I'm not too sure everyone is the same but what I look back on I don't look back on you know winning winning games I've had to go back and look at this game because I don't really remember it but you remember the people you remember the good people right mm-hmm. and he was one of the best so to, to have played with him was a real pre- real pleasure and we had some real good characters and he was top of the tree for that one. Well, it's been brilliant to have the legend that is Jim Hamilton on the Crabby's Changing Room chat ahead of tonight's game against Ireland. I look back um, on some of Jim's memories as well as some of Mossy's and Annie's as well. So enjoy tonight's game. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having Thanks, me, guys. Jim. Loved it.